Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ranch Remodel. Steve Basic Architect here for the Build Show. We're out here in my favorite room in the house. This one's got that barrel vaulted coffered ceiling, right? If you haven't seen the video where we put that together and installed it, go back and check it out. But today we're talk about we're here to talk about the pieces that complement that barrel vaulted ceiling here at the head wall of the living room. So you can see basically we have the fireplace, mantle, and it's flanked by two bookcases. So that's the idea. But how do we take that idea and bring it to reality and create the success that we have here? Um, that's the process. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we knew we were gonna have the round ceiling. We knew that we were gonna have a fireplace here. Um, we knew it was going to be a landscape fireplace. So early on, the homeowners had to go out, basically select the fireplace. They didn't have to purchase it, but we had to get a good handle on, is this thing four foot wide, five foot wide, you know, six foot wide. They settled on the five foot width here, the 60 inch width. Um, you can see the flames going. It does have some pretty cool perks to it. Like it can be blue, it can be green, it can be red, it can be cyan or it can be white. So you get to play with the colors. Me personally, I like the blue, or I like the cyan. It's got a nice glow to it. Um, but again, so we know we have the fireplace, but now how do we wrap these wood bookcases, the mantelpiece? What does all of that stuff look like? What shape is it? What size is it? All of that good stuff. So a couple of decisions early on. We knew this was gonna be a sitting room. So we didn't wanna put the fireplace on the floor. We wanted to bring it up the wall. So we brought it up the wall about 20 inches so that as the sitting furniture is here, everybody gets a nice view of the fireplace, right? So <clears throat> with that, we also knew that we were gonna do flanking bookcases and then have the mantle. Well, the one thing that I wanted to set this up for was to have something to be able to be put here, whether it's a family portrait, a piece of artwork, or something that takes this to the next level and accentuates what we did here. So creating that space and elevating those bookcases on each side really left that really nice space there. So let's talk about some of the design elements of the mantle and the bookcases. Well, we have fur throughout the house, but one of the things we did to complement the fur was introduce some mahogany, usually at the top. So it's the caps, the, the rail to the stairway, the uh, seat on the window seat, all of these pieces. So when it came to this, it was pretty much a no brainer. Let's do the mantle and let's do the bookcase caps out of the mahogany. We'll let the rest of it be that dug fur that just, you know, makes this place a really nice warm feeling. Because we had that barrel vault in there, I want to make sure that these tops were nice, strict, hard lines. So I don't want to introduce anything up high because I really wanted these straight lines to play off and give you that feel of the arch there, right? Because it's a really nice subtle arch. But the strength in that arch is the eye comparing it to these straight lines. But in doing this, I wanted to be able to complement the idea of the barrel vault in here. So you notice on the top here, we did a very subtle arch here, and that complements that barrel vault. But we also did some very contemporary corbels here. And you can see we did them in a, a seven inch width, so there's some power to them, but it's a very subtle curve. And that very subtle curve, again, it's to bring it into that language of that arch and the barrel vault that we have above. As far as the mantle goes, you know, we did it in a series of pieces. So you have the cap, you have a couple fascia and subfascia. We actually did a little saw cut in the fascia board there to just break that down into three pieces. And then we have the bookcase here. And you notice that the fireplace mantle, it steps out in front about five inches. So we wanted to be able to coastline these bookcases in the fireplace to really make that mantle and fireplace the prominent effect on the head wall here. 
Lastly, notice that even the detail inside the bookcase where we get a vertical V groove in the dug fur, and that's just to add some texture to that back side of the bookcase rather than just have the wall um, or have this white background back there. We wanted the bookcase to be furniture-like and to be a part of the furniture and not of the wall. So adding that backing really brings that out. Um, other than that, let's jump back to the studio. We'll break out the drawings, we'll break out big red. We'll talk about all this stuff a little bit more in detail. Let's see you back at the studio. Hey everybody. So can't tell you how uh, much I enjoy doing little field trips out to uh, the rancher model out there. Every every part of that project is just a joy to walk through um, and uh, an experience. I mean, the minute you walk in that room with all that fur in there, it just it, it exhumes this kind of nice, nice warm feeling. The, the color of that fur and the bookcases, the fireplace. I mean, man, you grab a good book, a cup of coffee, and you might never leave that room. But uh, anyways, it doesn't get there by accident. You know, a long, long time ago, an older architect friend of mine said, design is no accident, right? You got to go through the paces. You got to go through all the no's to find the yeses. And, uh, you know, I think we struck up some good yeses there, but uh, let's uh, dive into some details. Guess who's joining us is probably no surprise, right? Big Red is on the case and uh, we're going to into, dive into some of those details and uh, we're going to see how we got there. So let's have at it. All righty. So Big Red coming out to join us. I broke out a uh, section elevation of that living room. Um, put you in the right orientation. You can see you know, wall, here's that uh, bare vaulted coffered ceiling. Beautiful ceiling up there. This is the wall on the other side. I superimposed. This is the uh, window seat opening that also happens on the left side. But you can see this is the uh, wall of bookcases and uh, fireplace. So, that being said, let's do a quick outline here. You can see the fireplace there. There's that. Top of the bookcases and the shelves there. And the baseboard. And then on this side we have that same thing happen in there. Come down. So you know, and then of course the fireplace mantle strikes along the top there. So a couple things that uh, are uh, in order here. You know, the, the barrel vault itself sets up the room to basically be symmetrical along its center point so that both sides here match exactly. I mean, the window seat throws that off a little bit, but actually it's symmetrical to an opening on the other side of the room there. So you do feel it, but I'm talking about that head wall where, you know, this dimension here is exactly the same as that dimension there. And, um, you know, fireplace is perfectly centered. It's, it's just the barrel vault itself doesn't lend itself to any asymmetry. It, it lends itself purely to be spot on symmetrical. So that was pretty much a given in, in developing a sense of order in that room and developing a sense of order for everything that we're going to put on that wall, that it was going to be symmetrical. Um, we knew we were putting a fireplace in. We knew that the fireplace of choice was a landscape fireplace. In this case here, it's a five footer um, or 60 inch. So there were a couple of immediate decisions that had to be made about that. Um, you know, what's the distance from the ground here? And um, what is, you know, the relative distance there? Based on that, what is this distance here? That's That was given, that's 13 inches that we knew the fireplace was by the five feet. So the first thing was we knew is because it was a sitting room, we were going to have furniture up in front of it that we wanted to get it off the ground. And um, so 
I brought that up. I don't know what is that. It's about 17 and a half inches off the ground to the bottom of the fireplace. Kind of brings it up in view. So when you're sitting in the chairs or on the couches there, you're not looking down at the floor to catch that fireplace. You brought it up a little. Um, and then that dimension there pretty much equals about the side here. If you remember in the video, we did do a very subtle arch across there. And that was intentional in that, that arch, right, is to pay homage to the arch of the room. So it's not exactly the same radius. It doesn't have to be because the, the distance that they're displaced from, there's really no suggestive um, exact comparison. The eye sees it as, hey, here's a curve and here's a curve. So they match. We're good. So we live with that. Now, one of the things that I did when we talked about the video is because we have that curve, we made some very staunch horizontal lines here, right, in the mantle and at the top of the bookcases. And that, you know, very intentional. You could, you could have came in and we could have thought about, do we do curves here? But my personal position is, is when you do something that's this exciting, where you do that barrel vaulted roof, then I want to create a supporting cast, not a competing cast. So it's, it's interesting because while I do a curve here, I think that supports the effort in the grand scheme of the barrel vaulted ceiling. But when we looked at, you know, do we take these bookcases up and, and do some arches or something in here, the, the proximity and such, it started to feel more like a competition. And so we chose not to do that. We chose to keep it down low, keep some wall in there, but again, introduce those strong horizontal lines. And if you notice at the fireplace, that one was even dropped down a little further. And the reason for that was to create a space here for something. And at the time we designed it, we didn't quite know what that something was. But, you know, designing numerous houses and um, remodeling numerous houses in New England and putting fireplaces in, you know, a lot of people put their family photo, family portrait up there. A lot of people will do kind of the half ship model. Um you know, and uh, put that up there. But there's all kinds of things. Put, you know, if you're in a sailing or something, you might put, you know, your favorite navigational map or some kind of heirloom um, type map up there. But regardless, it's kind of the, the perfect display space, if you will. And so dropping that down only makes that look a little bit better. Now, I talked about the horizontal lines being a supporting cast in that because of that horizontal line, you get to understand the curve there because of, uh, you know, their different natures. Um, but to sit there and just say, okay, we'll do a horizontal line was one thing. But if you noticed in the video that all of the horizontal pieces, we made those out of mahogany. So they're actually a different material than the fur that's down here in the boards and then the shelving and in the bookcases and you know, in the posts and uh, mantle. And that mahogany really jumps out at you to, uh, what you call it, emphasize that horizontal line. But the mahogany is also a, a really, while it's a good contrast to the fur, it's actually a really good complement to it, too, that it's just, you know, a darker reddish color there. So they work very well together, but it really kind of sets that apart. Um, the other thing that we talked about in the video is, is that this actually coastlines, right? So if I drew this in plan, you'd have the bookcase and then this fireplace comes out and then it goes back in and goes. So we have this, I don't know, it's probably about a four inch displacement where that fireplace comes out. Um, somewhat of a no brainer. The fireplace is the most important piece um, in this wall system. That's, again, supporting that ceiling system. So we wanted to bring that forward so that we have this level of hierarchy. And even though this is lower than that, 
by pulling it out in front, really, that makes that a number one, and that makes this number two, or supporting cast to that. We talked about the arch being there. I wanted to create a few more somewhat contemporary suggestions that offer support to that ceiling. Um, if you noticed, we had those corbels on both sides of the post, and the beauty of those corbels were that they are just the slightest arch there. So again, certainly not the same radius as this or that, but because that's a curve, and this is a curve, and that's a curve, we've developed this level of cohesiveness in what we're looking at. So, you know, the, the whole goal here is, is that when somebody walks into the room and they look at this, that it feels like it was intentionally put together and that they belong together. They're a family of components that make up that uh, that head wall, the ceiling, and inevitably the room in general and the series of rooms makes up the house, right? So there's that kind of logistics or um, evolution through the whole project. But, you know, just speaking into this room, we have the curve at there, we have the curve here, and we have the curve at the ceiling. So we have a common language there. It offers cohesiveness. We have our sense of order in that everything is bilaterally, bilaterally symmetrical. Say that fast a hundred times. So you drive yourself nuts. Um, and of course, we have the hierarchy, right? We have this pulled out. It has that fireplace, the change of materials and the fact that this is all, you know, all stone around it here really helps let that pop. And of course, you know, turning on the fireplace, having three or four or six color um, selections there to change the mood, always a good thing. Um, one of the other things that we did look at was, you know, we have our baseboard goes around the house and it goes in front of the bookcase. For a short minute, we discussed, do we continue the baseboard across the front? And I was totally against it and actually got my way on that one. So we uh, we don't have it. I wanted the stone to go all the way to the floor and feel like the fireplace is, you know, like a traditional fireplace coming out of the floor, coming out of the basement. Even though it doesn't continue up, but I wanted that kind of sense of connection to the floor. I didn't want to separate it with that baseboard. Um, the uh, coffered ceiling, if you remember, it has some recess pieces in it that, you know, if you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. It's the traditional woodworks did a fabulous job there, but it has a bunch of those recesses that we wanted to repeat. So in doing the mantle and doing these caps of the bookcases, you'll see we have a series of saw cuts there that uh, help make that up. And it really drives it to be a, uh, you know, beautiful beautiful accent to that. Um, we have the bookcases. Uh, we did fixed bookshelves and they're not uh, adjustable ones. We wanted it to be right um, and get it proportionally correct. And then lastly, I touched on it in the video, we actually did fur v-groove and we've used these fur v-groove in other places in the house, but we did them as the, the backer boards to the bookcase. And, uh, and that's, again, in an effort that not only does it tie all of this together and tie that and that together and emphasize that uh, bilateral symmetry between the two pieces, this V-groove dug fur can be found all around the house. And so it ties this image here and the imagery in this room to other aspects of the project in other rooms and wainscoting and, and the like. But uh, anyways... Those are the thoughts that, uh, you know, we went through in uh, putting this just this wall together. So hopefully you enjoyed that. All righty. There we have it. Guess who we're putting to bed? Big Red. Big Red. We're some overtime. Big Red is a huge asset to this video game. You know, he allows us to 
maneuver through all these details, these drawings really quick, get that, get the points across, get the information. He doesn't waste any time, helps us out with a, a little bit of that education and uh, bringing it right to the forefront of understanding. So kudos to Big Red for always joining in and uh, having, having an opinion there or uh, helping us out. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, you know, I really wish I could take all of you out there, bring you on a field trip, go check out the house firsthand. Um, you know, it's uh, the pictures, as good as they may seem or the videos may seem, it just doesn't do it justice. You have to walk through that space, be in that space. The minute you walk in there, that, that Doug fur just takes over and uh, it exhumes this this kind of comfort and warmth that, uh, you know, coupled with that fireplace, you just want to sit down, grab a book, grab a coffee, and uh, never leave. <laughs> so, anyways, that's a wrap for this week's video. If you want more, go out on Instagram. You can find me at Steve Basic Architect. My lovely daughter, Alexandra, well, she's on Instagram too, and uh, we're posting stuff all the time. Uh, you can uh, keep up to date. It's all current stuff. We, we do, we're doing some really exciting stuff these days, so uh, we like to share it with you. And if you want to go above and beyond, then check out that Unbuilded podcast. I team up with my good buddies uh, Peter Yost and Jake Bruton. Every other week, we bring it live. And actually, we got a really big surprise on that coming up that uh, we're going to dump on the world. But uh, all I can leave you with is a teaser on that right now. But uh, Unbuilded podcast. Peter, Jake, and Steve, we talk about building science concepts, building industry concepts. We break them down. We uh, joke. We hate each other. All that good stuff. But uh, in the end, we all get a little something out of it. So always a plus. So signing off. Until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>